Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. In my next few months, I'm going to be showing you a wide range of free software applications and free operating systems. All of these will obviously have to run on some kind of hardware, and you're bound to ask me, what are you running that stuff on? And therefore, in this video, I'm going to set up a test PC. Right. I'm going to base my test rig around this PC, which I put together a couple of years ago for my Building a Budget PC video. Since that time, it's been changed a little bit, not least it's donated its DVD drive to my i3 PC, but of course, we can easily fix that. So let's take a look uh, inside this box, remind you what's uh, in here. Just got a couple of thumb screws to uh, get in. This PC was initially built with a uh, Intel chipset motherboard, a gigabyte motherboard, and a, a Celeron processor. But then I, if you like, upgraded it to an AMD processor and a comparable gigabyte motherboard. So now inside here, we've got a, a CPU with an AMD A83870K. That's a fairly sort of low-end quad-core 3 gigahertz CPU. And it's also based in a gigabyte A75M S2V motherboard. In terms of memory, Somewhere in here, beneath all the wiring, yes, my cable management is terrible here. Maybe I'll, I'll improve it. But the memory under here is two sticks of memory and from Corsair, giving us eight gigabytes of DDR3 memory at a 1333 megahertz. Now, the computer here has got an APU in it, so it doesn't actually have to have a graphics card fitted, but I have, since I put this together, actually fitted a, a, a graphics card. Some of you noticed very cleverly this was the PC I've used to uh, do my Windows 10 testing on in, in fairly recent videos. And the, uh, the graphics card in here is actually a GeForce 9500 GT. So quite an old card, but uh, gives us a bit more power than the APU on the board. Will be useful for some of the software testing I'll be doing. Again, as some of you I'm sure will be screaming at the screen right now, aha, this is the card you took out of your main video editing PC when you upgraded the card in that fairly recently. And yes, that is true. Just to point out that things sometimes do go wrong, down here you'll see the graphics card is held in with a rather unusual nut and bolt arrangement. You might be thinking, what's going on there, Chris? Well, the actual answer is that the thread for actually putting in the uh, screw to hold in the graphics card here has gone in the case. This is a fairly cheap case that sometimes happens, and therefore I've had to make do with a, with a nut and bolt. So I like to show you things, um, what and all, Sometimes you have to make these uh, not ideal adjustments to make things continue to function. Right, the uh, hard drive in this PC is currently a 74 gigabyte Western Digital Velociraptor, a 10,000 RPM drive from quite a few years ago. Not very modern, but perfectly good for some basic test purposes. However, in this PC, I want to have lots of different operating system configurations. And there's various ways I could achieve that. One would be to set up a number of different virtual PCs. And while I might show you how to do that in a future video, that's not the route I'm going to go on this test rig. The second option would be to have a dual boot configuration, or indeed a multi-boot configuration, to switch between lots of operating system setups. But I'm not going to do that either. The reason is I've got quite a lot of old drives lying around that I've been putting together in one place in my various reorganizations recently. And therefore, what I'm going to do is to fit into the PC this caddy. This will allow me to uh, switch a hard drive in and out very easily just from the front of the machine. And so if we get this thing out, always nice to be unboxing something, isn't it? Oh, it's plastic wrapped. That's exciting, not least because I haven't got any scissors here, but uh, there we are. We can hopefully... Oh, we can get in. Yes, very exciting. You maybe can't see the plastic wrapping because it's clear. But anyway, if we can get in there. This is a device which hopefully I can get the plastic off. There we are. Who says that took far longer than I thought it would? Subtle cut there. And uh, as you can see, we have a device here which is, which is locked. So if we take the little, little keys it came with it, the key goes in there, you uh, unlock, this swings open, this is a caddyless tray, and in theory I can take a SATA drive, plunks in there, 
Obviously, this will be done when it's on the PC. And as you can see, that's actually locked in. So it means your, your drive is completely inside your computer. Nothing is sticking out, but you can switch drives really easily. You just do that and, well, hey, drive comes out. So this will give the ability to switch drives on our, our test rig. So what I need to do is to fit this to the test rig. And we'll start out by removing one of these front panels because I want to fit this thing and DVD above it. And then we can thread things in here. Maybe a good idea to have a SATA cable in first. Maybe not, we will, we will find out. Anyway, get it in, get it the right way up, of course. Um, that looks like it'll fit in. Okay, it will. I can now reach down to my magic uh, collection of screws. Amazing how many screws you get and you've been doing PCs for a while. And we can start to uh, put this thing in to secure it in place. And uh, there we are. I think I've put six screws in, so it's really, really solid to work as a, a drive bay. And then I'll also fit in this uh, DVD drive. This is actually a, a second-hand drive I got from a local computer shop. I'm sure it'll be perfectly okay. It's a, it's a non-branded drive on the front, but if you look on the back, it's a uh, Pioneer drive, so I'm sure that's going to be pretty good. And it'll fulfill the purpose it needs in this system. So all we need to do now is to remove the uh, hard disk from where it's currently mounted in the PC. Probably have to take the wiring power and SATA off first. There we are. That hopefully will come out. Please fit. Please don't require me to get other things out to get you out. No, it'll come. There we are. Beautiful. That's come out. And then if we're lucky and the world, his uh, wife and their dog named Sebastian are all uh, on our side. This should uh, take our system drive, fitting in. Very good. So with uh, all the wiring fitted, everything wired up and everything in here as neat as it's going to get this side of a judgment day anyway, uh, particularly in a case with no uh, real wiring system, we just need to connect in the power connector again for the, the side fans, which go in there. That's the fans. Where are we? The fans up here, um, and then this, in theory, will go back on. These always go on really, really easily, or with great difficulty. Don't know this. Oh no, that's not too bad. There we are. No, no, haven't got the bottom. Come on, you swine! You can get in for me. Thank you. So we've got the side on there, and I'll just put the thumb screws back in at the back. We can then couple the PC with a, a monitor, a, a keyboard, and one of my uh, wacky ergonomic mice, and hopefully boot it up and it will still work. Here goes. That sounded good. I could hear the, uh, the DVD drive making a noise there. That's always a good sign. And there we are. It seems we have a working PC, which is going to be our explaining computers test system for all sorts of software in the coming videos. I'm very pleased how well the bay has gone in on the front of my test PC to allow me to switch in and switch out different three and a half inch drives. And indeed, I've even got myself uh, quite a few of these nice uh, colored plastic cases, which you can put your uh, three and a half inch drive inside there. There we are, look, and uh, keep them all safely on the shelf, ready to go into the computer. However, as some of you might have noticed, in addition to a range of old three and a half inch drives, I've also got um, an old SSD. We've now had SSDs long enough, you can have old ones lying around. Well, I do anyway. And therefore, you might be thinking, Chris, why don't you use this SSD as your boot drive, at least for Windows 10 in your, your PC, rather than one of these um, old three and a half inch drives? And of course, that's a very good idea. And therefore, in my next video, I'm going to show you how you take a piece of free software and use it to transfer your operating system and all your files and programs from a three and a half inch drive to an SSD. But now that's it for this time, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.